there are a lot of things going on in this government. There's a lot of things going on in Los Angeles. In the LA City Council, there is a ton of stuff, not just here, but all over the country, even all over the world. But there's people who are thinking of moving out here to LA and there's just a lot of things that you guys need to know, of course, before making that move. Welcome to the podcast with your special host, Todd <laughs> and Tasha. So we are going to get into this video here. We have one of our subscribers who asked a question in a comment section, and we're going to read that comment. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about things that's going on in Los Angeles City Council. We're going to talk about how that ties in into some of the development, like the 77 story tower. We're going to talk about the Angels Landing. We're going to tie all this into this podcast. Exactly. So once again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. And let's get to the comments. So first of all, shout out to all of our new subscribers and of course, existing subscribers. And we got a, um, a special message from a recent subscriber. Her name is Shay. And here's what she what's said. up, Shay? What's going on? <laughs> and I hope I didn't butcher that, but it looks exactly like Shay. So so here's what she had to say. I just found your channel and love your content. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your perspectives and stories. Given one of the reasons y'all left Detroit was due to a corrupt government slash politics, do you think LA's government is better, worse, or about the same as Detroit? Also, in your opinion, do you see home ownership as an option in LA or Cali in general? Or do you see yourself staying in Cali for a while, then moving to another state where housing is more affordable? That was another question she had. And do you actually see the homelessness in Cali subsiding before the Olympic Games in 2028? Again, thank you for sharing your stories and perspectives. God bless you. And God bless you, too, as well, Shay. Well, we have a lot of stuff to get into. A lot of stuff. A lot yeah, of stuff. Definitely. OK, so what's the first one that uh, we're going to tackle here? So, again, let's tackle first and foremost. Mm -hmm. For those who are new to the channel, we talk about everything L.A. and California based and beyond as well, too. So mm -hmm. our main topics are about California, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. but we do get into even more deeper topics as well exactly so um first let's go ahead and, and answer the question about the the government and politics in la is it better worse or the same as good old detroit shout out guys well <laughs> so detroit i'm not sh honestly i'm not sure what the city council is like right now in detroit i'm not really sure what's going on in terms of their government that they have their local government mm -hmm. i just know that when we were there obviously um well not obviously because you don't know but we talked about this in another video there was a big scandal where the mayor at the time his name was kwame kilpatrick and i believe he's a changed man so no, no shade or anything right towards him but uh he made some wrong, wrong decisions mm -hmm. and not just that but the city council they were involved in a whole lot of things okay. that just was not kosher i'll put it like that mm -hmm. um, they couldn't get along they couldn't get along with uh the suburbanites it was just a lot of a lot of things going on right uh, they were you know stealing money from the city just some everything so that was a long time ago but so we have our government here in Los Angeles, our local, I call government, with a city council. So it is really, see, there's a lot of things that goes on behind the scenes that obviously we don't know about unless it gets found out and it gets reported exactly. on the media. So there's a lot of things going on in the city council like this racist scandal where uh, city council members was caught on hot mic, basically, <laughs> you know, making just terrible comments towards other members of the uh, city council there and even making fun, you know, talking about the children. They were talking about black folks. They were talking about mm -hmm. uh, Korean and Jewish people, all of that stuff. So uh, the president of the LA city council, she ended up resigning. She, I guess she supposedly felt bad about it, felt bad about what she said. I don't necessarily think she felt bad. I just think that she, because she got caught, she 
was upset that she got caught and she called herself she figured, trying to apologize. Yeah. And, and so there were some other council members who were making basically comments and making fun of some of the other council members and their children and using the term monkey and some other words and names I'm not going to mm-hmm. even like, you know, so I'm not going to go there with that. So all that stuff was going on. One of the council members, Kevin DeLeon, he refused to step down. Everyone right. was calling for him to step down. He would not step down being bullheaded, stubborn. And basically he was holding up the council from having the meetings that they are supposed to have. And then there was protests going on. They were calling for him to resign. But again, he did not, he did not want to resign. My, in my opinion, it was basically a... A money thing. He, yeah. I guess, could not let that money go. Not doing any good for the city of L.A. And I, f- I feel also it was a power move as well. Because, again, definitely money, definitely power. The whole thing was, too, after the scandal took place, it was an issue that was saying, hey, will this affect redistrict- redistricting, excuse me, in the future, because that was one of the issues that came up w- during a scandal was basically that they were assumed to going to be drawing the lines or redrawing the lines so that it would be more favorable to certain people, groups, council members, etc. So mm-hmm. that is what, you know, that was one of the biggest things. But the sad thing is that, of course, he never did step down. He's still there on the council right now. Right. So I feel that in and of itself is actually sad because if he was, you know, caught doing some questionable things, everyone else stepped down. Why wasn't a more concerted effort made for him to absolutely have to step down as well? So it's like if he's still on there, what are his motives? That's how I feel about it. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. That's a good question. I mean, a lot of people want to know that too as well. And mm-hmm. again, what were they planning? Just where you're talking about as far as the redistrict mm-hmm. thing that was going on. Um, like, again, what are they trying to do behind closed doors? So right. making things more favorable to certain groups of people. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not right. That's not right. And mm-hmm. so if they did not get caught, what would have been like the outcome, exactly. you know, even years to come. And as far as I'm concerned, like this, even this government, the, you know, U.S. government, mm-hmm. in my opinion, is just, there's scandals, there's things that's going on oh, yeah. that should not be going on. And again, really to tell you the honest truth, even about just the whole government <laughs> yeah. in general, that what I really believe, and I really believe this, even more when the whole pandemic was going on is that it's going in the direction of becoming a totalitarian government. You know, mm. that's what I really believe because wow, it, it's just a lot of stuff. I mean, I just better not get into the whole government what's going on or, or you know, so I don't, but anyway, let's get back to, <laughs> <laughs> let's get back to LA County because I'm going to be all night talking. Exactly. So, so. So basically to answer the question, oops. So basically to answer the question, you know, it's really a matter of perspective and opinion. Now, some could say and argue that, again, when we were in Detroit, because that's kind of where, that's actually where this stemmed from the question. Because again, you know, we're addressing where you're at. You know, how is your city council or government as opposed to LA, wherever you are, if you're deciding, you know, thinking about moving here. So the question was, hey, is it better? Is it worse? Is it the same? And I say as a matter of opinion, because, again, if what from what we experienced was a lot of like. I would say slow action, misaction back in Detroit when it comes to actually like doing something that's going to really benefit the city, not being able to work with again out um, with, with with other Groups in other cities, the suburbs, it was just always like this one closed shelter thing. And they were making it seem like, oh, they won't work with us. And, you know, just a lot of um, missed opportunities, I'll say. 
Okay, so let's start to dig deeper into this city council scandal. Mm-hmm. So this is not the first run at, you know, as far as scandals in the Los Angeles City Council. So let's talk about this. There was a city council member who has been a city, was a city council member for umpteen years. His name was Jose Hazier, if I'm pronouncing oh, his right. last name. Mm-hmm. So this, this is like really, really just crazy. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So this guy basically was taking bribes. People were bribing him to. So let me say this. So the city council members, they all are assigned to different districts, different. They have different sections of Los Angeles right. where they're assigned to. So Jose Hazier, he was assigned to the downtown district area. Mm. Okay. So. There was a China, there's a China group called the Shenzhen, Shenzhen group. Mm-hmm. The Shenzhen group, they basically were bri- was bribing Jose. Okay, I'll give you this amount of money if I can build, you know, buildings in this in your district. Mm. So the Shenzhen group, they wanted to build a 77 story skyscraper. I mean, guys, this was a super tall. This was going to be. Again, the tallest skyscraper outside on, on the West Coast yeah. outside of Chicago. Wow. It was going to be like super tall. 77 stories. And it was approved. This building was approved. So what happened was Shenzhen Group, they were trying to, where well, they weren't trying to, they were, they were bribing Jose and how they were bribing him, they were saying, hey, okay, I'm going to give you this amount of money. I'll give you $600,000. i will give you... So they were giving him, like, plane tickets on, to go on nice, lavish trips. They were also uh, giving him, like, uh, gambling chips, ga- uh, casino chips, oh whatever you want to call it. Yeah. yeah. So he was, like, going to Vegas, chilling, having a good time, gambling. Uh, he was also giving money, like, for prostitutes. And, I mean, he had, like... Call he girls, chicks. Oh he was having a ball with these chicks, these prostitutes, spending all this money. They were just feeding him money because they were doing all of this. So he will basically sway the other city council members to approving the project mm. that they wanted built. So he basically did. He persuaded other his fellow council members. And they end up approving the 77-story building. It was all over the news. And like, wow, this big, tall building is going to get built. So basically, he was being spoiled and all this type of stuff and getting all this money. So also with that, so another situation came up before, of course, the whole scandal broke, is that there was a sexual harassment lawsuit against Jose Mm -hmm. from a young lady I believe it was an ex coworker or something like that. I don't, I can't remember for sure, but basically that the Shenzhen group at paid, you know, gave him the money to pay her off. And I think she was paid off. I don't know, like 600, 700 or whatever it was, thousand dollars. I may not have my numbers exactly right, but you can look it up and get the exact numbers yourself. So it was a lot of stuff. So finally, uh, he finally got busted. It finally came out. And the sad part is, is that now that, the they found of course Shenzhen group guilty that the building is not going to get built the skies this skyscraper would have been really really fantastic it would have really made our city look that much more just even better appealing. in terms of like appealing yeah. as far as the skyline mm-hmm. so then this is the problem like you have of course, there's a lot of red tape when you're trying to get buildings built and things like that. There's a lot of red tape that can be avoided if they just make some changes. So uh. there's a lot of projects, of course, that are, you know, was supposed to have been built that hasn't been built yet. And so with that, the other thing is that there was actually there's a building called Angels Landing that is supposed to be built. And it's been in the works for umpteen years, I think maybe close to 10 years. I don't remember the exact mm. number. And so when this whole scandal came out, so the building is originally, I think, was going to be like 88 stories or something like that. And then they oh cut gosh. the floors back. Then Again, it may not be that exact number, but I remember like 88 or something stories. So they cut the number back. I really don't know why they cut it back. So there was an interview with the McFarland partners. 
and they said that when this scandal came out and Kevin DeLeon and his actions and his racist comments, they said they now believe that he is the reason why their project has been delayed because they've been trying to get this project off the ground for umpteen years for a long time. Mm -hmm. But they said that Kevin just will not meet with them for whatever reason. He just won't meet with them. He keeps trying to set up meetings with him. And it's like, I guess he's avoiding where you believe that he's avoiding the McFarland partner so they can go ahead and get this thing off the ground and get it built. A lot of things. So he believes that is due to racism. Why? Kevin won't meet with them. So this project has been like delayed and stalled for the longest time. Right. So again, these are the issues that are going on here. And I know that Ty was talking about a snippet of the whole red tape situation. When it comes to getting anything built here, it is so frustrating because you look forward to different projects and it takes forever because again, red tape, they won't change these particular ordinances they just keep them in place and it's super frustrating for people like us as far as residents because we see the potential because we see the potential when it comes to you know what could be right but it just seems to fall flat a lot of times and that kind of leads into the homeless situation as well exactly yeah just a lot of things aren't getting done again the red tape because to get something built, you have to go through like this long process to get like building permits and OKs and things like that. And all this research and environmental impact reports. And then you have people like suing because they don't want a building built in their area, their neighborhood, or because it may be blocking their view, all sorts of crazy stuff. But still, even before that, you even excluding that part, it's still like a lot of red tape. Mm-hmm. And... I just feel like things can be changed. It can be different. I think that yeah. they're giving favoritism over s- some projects over others. Mm. Again, I don't have any factual proof on this, but I'm just saying that what I believe, I believe that they're so Korean air. They built the skyscraper, mm-hmm. the tallest skyscraper here in California, in Los Angeles, but they didn't seem to have any problem getting their tower built but then the McFarland partners which you know they are black Mm -hmm. is having a problem with getting his project built so right but uh, so yeah that's going on with that part of the deal so uh, let's let's get to our next question All right. so next we have um, okay so let's talk about home ownership is that even a viable option in LA like where do we see, you know, that going in terms of being of affordability or whatever the case? Because that was the next question. She was saying, is home ownership an option in L.A. or is this something to where you just like, hey, we're going to be here for a minute and then eventually move to another state where it's more affordable? Well, honestly, home ownership in Los Angeles right now is like. I mean, you can do it. It's kind of like a yes or no answer, basically. Yeah. You can do it, but then it's a chance that you can't do it. It's super hard to do it, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. The thing is, because the homes are so super high in Los Angeles, you have to come up with a huge down payment. And even when you come up with a huge down payment, you're still not getting much for your money to mm. be perfectly honest with you you're not getting much there's there's a lady i know she just basically bought a condo and she showed me the condo and the condo was like around 739 740 thousand dollars she is a nurse practitioner she makes about 140 some dollars a year 140 some thousand dollars a year <laughs> and she has pretty good credit. She put like, I think, 20% down or whatever. She did all that. Okay, that's good. She was able to afford to do that. Mm-hmm. But when she showed me this condo and everybody has, you know, different tastes, but I looked at it and I was just like, wow, this is a condo because it looks like an apartment and just a really not so great area. 
And that's the thing about out here when it comes to housing. You, sure, you may be able to quote unquote do it, but you may be in some questionable areas. Again, everybody's taste is different. And I definitely agree. When you have these particular homes in certain areas, you're looking at it and it's just like sometimes it's guys it's like a two bedroom house yeah a two bedroom house and it's like a million dollars or eight hundred some thousand dollars in the city of la and and you know close close proximity and you're just looking like okay this is a 1200 square foot house (laughs) for over a million dollars or the condos it's so interesting because i felt always thought like okay condos Yes, I understand that they're like buildings, similar to apartment buildings or whatever the case. You just simply own it. But I would think that a condo, again, I have certain standards and likes and everything else, and everybody's different. But it's just like out here, as Todd mentioned, the condo, it could be looking like um, this is a questionable just place to rent as opposed to something that I would actually want to purchase. But because, again... The housing is just the building, like new construction is not here. It is not in L.A. And you are just going to be you're going to have to basically expand your search outside of L.A. in terms of finding anything maybe affordable or more affordable or decent. Exactly. Yeah, it's just really ridiculous out here. And home prices are going up everywhere. But, of course, California, Los Angeles, San Francisco, it's super high. New York, of course. Hawaii is the highest. But it's really like so us like buying a house right here in the city, it's just not gonna happen. Because again, it's just I I agree because it's not the inventory is not there. The inventory and the value is just that is not there. And it's like you will get something. Unless you want to get something that, again, is like I will, I call a rinky dink house, <laughs> right? Then you know I just don't see it happening. Yeah, so we, I mean, we're looking in a ton of other places mm-hmm. inside within California right. in terms of a home, but we know it's not going to be directly in the city. Obviously, it's going to be the suburbs, and honestly, it's not easy even looking in the suburbs. Normally, well, usually the homes are a little bit cheaper in certain areas, in the suburban areas. It's just kind of one of those things where you gotta, you have to really study and look and search and everything mm-hmm. else. In terms of, I don't know. Uh, I mean, so homes that are like seven hundred thousand dollars, generally just a regular home, it looks like a piece of crap. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks like a piece of crap. It doesn't look like anything. But you can take that same seven hundred thousand dollars. You can go somewhere else, like Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. You can go to Nebraska or someplace like that, and you can get a heck of a piece of home, you <laughs> exactly. know, for that amount of money. But here, yeah. that's like chump change or something. It's right. crazy, exactly. So, and what was the next question after that? So, next after that, we have. Um. Oh, yeah, let's please let's get to this. So do you actually see the homelessness in California subsiding before the Olympic Games in 2028? Okay, so uh, before I answer that, let me just add to the last thing, too, Mm because I think I forgot to answer this part real quick. Uh, I don't see us moving outside of California and that's extreme circumstances regarding maybe uh, home issues or whatever. But I really don't. Honestly, see us packing the whole family moving again. But as far as this question, in terms of the homeless crisis, will that subside before the 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles? That's another like hard question to answer. I, you know, I want to say yes and no again. Mm-hmm. So the current mayor now supposedly is working on it. They're supposedly are trying to do things to take care of this homeless crisis. Um, I think that by 2028, it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be resolved. I'll put it like that. I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to take a lot longer than five years 
to resolve the situation? Well, you know, I I think that it can be done. Oh, yeah, definitely. However, can be. will it be done? And the reason that I say that is let's let's look at it like this. It took for how many mayors to even be mayor over this city in the recent what do you even say 20 years? For someone to actually come in and declare a state of emergency when it comes to homeless situation. Like it was beyond crisis mode. And when she came in, Mayor Bass, she's like finally said, okay, this is a state of emergency. So you know what I'm saying? So like basically things can be done. I'm not saying that she can't do it because that's not, you know, that would be like totally not even true. Right. It is going to take an, a, I say a huge concerted, consistent and focused effort in order for this to be resolved by 2028. Now, she may be on the war path, so to speak, to get it done because of that. And she realizes that, hey, I'm the first, you know, female black mayor. Right. So they're going to be looking at me extra hard, scrutinizing this. Yeah. So, hey, she may get it done because of that. But I, I don't see it obviously being totally eradicated. But I mean, it needs to be substantially better than what it is now. Yeah. It is just getting out of control. Yeah, it's just so out of control. It's very sad. Yeah, it's it's man, like they're they're trying to clean up Scare Row, and then there's issues in terms of working what they are going to do with Scare Row, and it's and then of course the eviction moratorium just ended on the 31st of March. So now we have a lot more people out, you know, on the street and that's going to be out on the street. So I don't again, if it's going to be, I don't know, I I don't know if it's going to be like fully solved within five years. Like she said, it can be, but something else is going on deeper that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things which I don't understand. There's a lot of things that need to take place. There's a lot. There's things that needs to be done right now in order for our city to really look good when the 2028 Olympics gets here. Right. So a combination of, you know, again, buildings, homelessness situation. Right. You know, all that. So, you know, again, all things are possible, but I I just don't know. I think it's a toss up because, again, it's. This issue, if this is what she's thinking, it's like, hey, they're going to be looking at me. She's going to get it done to a certain degree. That's what I think. Because, you know, we so many people come in and they say they're going to do this, they're going to do that. But they really don't do anything. That's the thing. They don't do anything. And then you have these homeless advocates and they like, honestly, in my opinion, you know, yeah, they mean well, but they tend to get in the way as well to yeah. our progress being made. And there's always an uproar. And But it's just not a good look. I was like thinking about just really taking some videos that they don't even show you on TV. Some These videos yeah. are really horrible. I mean, we walked through under overpasses and it was just full of trash. Like, I can't even explain. It was like walking into, like, a waste site where they dump all the trash from people's homes all over the country. That's how bad it, it looks. So, man, I don't know. Like, I, and I don't understand in terms of this city. So, listen, Los Angeles, we are one, two. We are, we have the third Los Angeles is the third richest city in the world. Right. Tokyo was number one. New York is number two. And Los Angeles, number three. You would think that Los Angeles, California would look way better, look much better, and will be doing way better than what they're doing now. This, in the course of state, is now the fourth largest Economy. The state of California is now the fourth largest economy in the world. But we should be doing better. But mm. we're not doing better. We're filthy rich. This city is filthy rich. Mm-hmm. But we, we're not doing better. That's the thing. We have the money. I should say they have the money to take care of the 
the homeless situation and then if they can just build the city up, clean it up and build the city up and stop being so hardcore when it comes to getting building permits. Mm. Look, and so one of the arguments is this, is that they're concerned about earthquakes and things like that, building buildings and earthquakes. But look at Tokyo. They have worse earthquake Way worse than, than we, we do. do. Worse earthquake issues than we do in LA. And look at Tokyo. Look at the tall, all of the tall skyscrapers. Beautiful. All of these beautiful buildings all over the place. Everything but us. Like it takes, what, five to 10 years just to get a skyscraper One, built. Yeah. So again, look, <laughs> emphasis on filthy rich because it's like, that's another thing too about out here, especially, you know, downtown area. I mean, guys, it, Literally, like Todd said, if you took some video and just show like the level of, I say, I'm sorry, filth, it's completely uncalled for, especially for the amount of money that they charge for, you know, not only residential, but commercial leasing is really quite unacceptable. And again, it really doesn't add up because it's like, what do you like? Where is the money going? Like, Put it into the community as far as like cleaning up. I mean, right. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, we just have so much potential. So, like I said, if you look at some of these other cities, New York or like Tokyo, I mean, it's, we have no excuse. This city has no excuse at all. So, hopefully, we answered um, all the questions. We thank you guys for tuning into this video. Thank you so much. And we appreciate, again, all our new subscribers. Again, this is the podcast with Todd and Tasha. Stay tuned for the next video. Peace.